What's going on guys, Bingo here, and today I want to do an in-depth deck profile for my Invoked Mech Knight um, list for the July 2019 format. So this deck didn't really get too many new tools um, coming off of the ban list, but because of the new set, Rising Rampage, there's a lot we can uh, discuss during this profile. So it's not going to be a traditional all monsters, all spells, and traps, and then extra deck. List. I'm just going to go engine by engine to discuss why I play each specific card and in the ratios that I do. So if you want the short version uh, in the description, there'll be a link to the just the deck profile, no analysis at all. But I wanted to take um, a little bit more time to discuss this deck in depth because, you know, I, I've always been frustrated that there, when somebody's doing a deck profile like in this setting, not at an event, they're not very like... They don't talk about the card choices a lot. It's just I play, play two of this, three of this, whatever. So I'm going to go over the main deck, the extra deck, as well as some options that you can consider in the main deck or side deck in this third pile. Uh, starting with the main deck, we got three Alistair the Invoker, and I'll just go through the rest of it. Uh, three Magical Meltdown, and then the one of Terraforming. Obviously, it's your if it's your bread and butter of the deck. So, as far as hits go on this deck, we lost the eighth copy of Alistair being the terraforming. But I mean, the math still works out. There, there is going to be a lot more games where you do not see this card in your opening hand, which is why we have some ta some other options in the deck that help guarantee us this engine. Okay, um, magical meltdown is extremely relevant with some cards in the deck because that summoning protection that it offers. Um, lets us facilitate some interesting plays like this deck hard loses to Colossus so instant fusion becomes an out to any problem monster that's not a link monster because you can summon Raijin in the summon window chain his effect and book the Colossus to help you get around those problem cards so uh, the problem the biggest problem invoked has ever had since it came out in fusion enforcers is that it's a normal summon reliant deck that just facilitates a consistent engine that is supposed to win the game over the course of multiple turns. The problem with that is Alistair itself is susceptible to every hand trap known to mankind except Ghost Ogre. Uh, you lose to Valor, Impermanence, uh, Ash, uh, Ghost Bell, DD Crow. Only two you don't lose to is like Ogre and Null Nun and Dogwood. So. You need to help mitigate the problems with the deck, and we do that by playing the next engine of the deck, which would be the Mech Knight engine. So the Mech Knight, um, the Mech Knight engine it has and always is the best supplemental engine for Invoked right now. So we're playing three uh, Purple Nightfall, two Blue Sky, and something a little off the norm is two Indigo Eclipse. The reason we play Mech Knights in the first place. This is a going second list, right? Um, they're easy bodies that you can summon to help link climb or just put a lot of pressure on your opponent. And Purple Nightfall's reoccurring advantage, it searches Blue Sky, which can be a, an insane swing in tempo, especially if it's just like a straight, I'm gonna summon Blue Sky and search two. Um, it offers a lot of value. They're all light, they're all free special summons, which is something that you know, Invoke Macaba is your your big play, right? You want to end with Macaba on the field after you've whittled down your opponent's resources with Purgatory or uh, whatever. So they're all light. They need to be a special summon-based uh, archetype that is light to fit in with Invoke. So they're, they're pretty much the only option. Um, and the Mech Knight Indigo Eclipse, we play two. Because there's a lot of interesting game states where if uh, we're playing uh, Cyphering Gear uh, Lambda in the deck, and if you open two Mech Knights plus Alistair, or Purple plus any Mech Knight and Alistair, it really helps you. It searches Gamma and ends with Macaba on the field. So uh, there, there's a couple of reasons. We do want a, a thicker Mech Knight engine, but Blue Sky doesn't do anything going first. Where um, Indigo Eclipse post game one and two. Uh, post game one he can actually do something because you can side in the uh, world legacy trap since I'm not playing it in the main deck and he'll offer two forms of negation or pseudo negation since it's pretty easy to play around but um, 
I've talked about this enough. I, I don't think there is any other Mech Knights warranted that worth playing, or that are worth playing. Um, Red Moon, it, it's good, but it requires... Red Moon and Yellow Star require too much setup, so they're, I honestly don't think they're worth playing. Um, and then as far as the hand traps go, we're playing 3 Ash. Um, 3 Ash is less important now than it was before, uh, because if you weren't playing against Sky Striker or Salomon Great, there wasn't always a fire in the graveyard for Purgatrio. But now since we have All Mirage and you can just normal summon Alistair and make it, um, it, it offers a lot more utility in that sense. So you're not as reliant on this card, but it is still the most generically impactful hand trap that we have because it stops Rogue in its tracks sometimes. It really hurts meta, it hurts the decks when their hands are like less than ideal. So um, th honestly, there's no reason to play less than three. Yeah, opening two kind of feels bad, but uh, it, you, you, you want to see at least one hand trap every single time game one because you're choosing to go second. Uh, we're playing three Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. <laughs> Honestly, not the biggest fan of this this current format. Um, there's not a lot of good hits, but when it is impactful, it is just devastating. So hitting a Saryujo with a bad hand on the Danger Thunder deck can end their turn. Hitting multi-roll, I mean, that's just game half the time. Uh, stopping Mirage Stalio before they make, ba like, if they're forced to make Mirage Stalio, like, it can be a little awkward because then they can't make the Sunlight Wolf. Uh, it has its utilities, but it's not as widely applicable as uh, Ash Blossom or the next card, Effect Veiler. So these last six hand traps, they're specifically light, uh, so that we're guaranteeing ourselves a target for Macabre because you don't always want to burn your Mech Knights. Uh, but this isn't once per turn, it's just proven successful, it can bypass chains, and uh, it, there's just no reason not to play this in this deck. Uh, and then our last form of hand trap is Fantastical Dragon Phantasmi. This card, this card is great. If you draw this going, uh, going second, game one, it lets you sculpt your hand. Uh, you'll know, by the time you drop it, you'll know what you're playing against, so you can think about what kind of outs you want, how many hand traps you want to keep. Do you want to keep your powerful spells? Do you want to keep uh, Meltdown? Like, it, it just helps you think about what you want to do. It offers targeting protection for Alistair, and that is awesome because Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss targets, Widow Anchor targets, Effect Veiler targets, Impermanence targets. They're, it's just a very, very good monster for this deck. Um, after you try to kill them, and let's say you don't make it, uh, this thing's a dark, uh, and making Kaliga can sometimes just be enough. Limiting a Sekka's Light deck to one monster effect per turn can be pretty devastating. Yeah, it's only 1800 defense, but you'll hopefully have Alistair in hand, and, you know, it's just sometimes the game goes down that far. All right, and that's it for the hand traps. And then the last two monsters of the deck are actually two Kaijus. These help facilitate your columns. They out problem monsters like Colossus and 38, and any, anything that can cause you a lot of problems. The attribute isn't too important. Uh, the earth sometimes comes up. We're not playing the water. Playing two different kaijus in case you open both of them and you can kaiju something and then special summon the other one for free for link material or just raw damage. Uh, it, these were not in the deck for a while, and I think that was justified pre Almirage and pre Lambda. But th this format, the way it's shaping up, Kaijus are looking, uh, you know, they're looking pretty good again. Um, but I, I honestly wouldn't play more than three. And notably, you want to play the two that are less than 2,500 because uh, you need Makaba to be able to beat over these things. Because the last thing you need to do, Kaiju a problem monster. And then you can't go to get over Jizukiru because it's bigger than your Makaba unless you use Alistair and then your engine shut off and it's just really awkward. So make sure make sure you're playing the two that are less than 2,500. And then on to the uh, the spells. We got three or two invocation and one book of the law. We're not playing desires. There's really no argument to play three. Um, I, I was playing three for a while with Desires, and that is just because I banished two like it's my job. Uh, and I just got frustrated, and I was playing it on a local scene, so um, 
and Book of the Law is just for the OTK. And then the supporting spell for the Mech Knight archetype. World Legacy Succession gives you a follow-up play. It's a searchable monster reborn that if you're going in game uh, turn three or four and your purple comes back and you can make Morning Star and search this, bring back a Link 2, make a Link 4. It, it's, just, it's just a good card, especially going second. Um, I, I don't really have anything to, play, to complain about it. I don't main deck the World Legacy Trap card for the Mech Knights that negates monster effects because I'm choosing to go second and I'm confident that I'll be able to get that going second pretty much every time. So I don't want a card that's dead in my hand for the off chance that I do have to go first game one. Now I will probably side that card because any competent player, they're going to make you a first because your board's not very scary. Uh, and it just offers another form of negation. So uh, one of the next spells will play three instant fusion. I'll get to the targets and I'll explain this more when I get to the extra deck, but this is just a very good card, um, especially right now. Uh, but I don't want to talk too much about it because I don't want to spoil the extra deck. Uh, two mind control. Uh, the idea of every card in this deck is I just want to stun my opponent and then clear their board and then win, right? So opening multiple copies of mind control is not always ideal because sometimes they only have two monsters. And one could just be dead in your hand, and um, I know it's not it's not once per turn, but it is it's a great card for dealing with one monster. Just like the kaiju's, you want to deal with one monster, and then that's it because you still need to advance your game. So you can clear your opponent's stuff all you want, but if you don't go for game, if you don't make their life point zero, you are probably not going to win, right? Because that's how you win the game. Uh, three copies of Cosmic Cyclone is the best. Uh, generic back row removal for this deck. This deck cannot afford the discard cost, especially let's say there's one set card and you really need to force it, like it's a crescendo or a uh, roar or a rage because you don't want to walk into that. This deck can't afford the neg one for twin twisters, especially game one. Um, and the last thing you want is it to be a dead card or being put in a position where you're forced to take that minus in card economy. So. Uh, Cosmic Cyclone being able to hit the multi-roll, hit uh, force the one of negations in the back row, hit a key card here and there. It, it's just a good generic card, and has always been uh, has always been that. All right, that's it for the main deck, guys. I believe it's 40 cards onto the extra deck. I'm just gonna throw out all the invoked fusions and explain ratios as they come up. So we got. One Macabre, or two Macabas, two Purgatrio, uh, one Earth, one Wind, and one Dark. So the way I built this deck, the way I'm trying to play it, is a OTK-based strategy. Stun them out, kill them really quick, and you don't need three Macabre for this strategy. There have been really long grind games where three does come up, but I'm not going to take that hit in the extra deck for the exception rather than the rule to purgatrio that does come up consistently because there's a lot of times where you can't quite kill them and you need that follow-up uh, whether it's through book of the law or whether it's through just making it next turn uh, it's, it's mandatory rigens for instant fusion uh, rigen plus meltdown for instant fusion is extremely powerful uh, under the right circumstances Kaliga can be a very, very irritating card for Sekka's Light decks to deal with. And Magellanica for the OTK is pretty important. So um, I wouldn't change this for this build of the deck. If I was playing a going first, more control deck with artifacts, I would 100% play three Macaba. But given the current deck list, I, I wouldn't adjust any of the invoked fusions. All right, and then the other instant fusion target, we have Thousand Eyes Restrict. This just says clear any card your opponent controls, or clear any monster your opponent controls. Extremely good. Um, if you got, just link it off. Uh, we're not playing Link Revo, but it is whatever. Uh, Salomon Geary, All Mirage, Alistair Invoker of Madness, and Mech Knight Morningstar. This is one of the cards I'm questioning because 
you like you always just want to make this yes this is a going first card but we're also playing lambda um i'm really just right now i'm testing to see which one i like more because i would side cyframe gear gammas and lambda is extremely powerful with that uh, i'd rather search the guaranteed negate and destroy rather than the trap card that's susceptible to back row removal and uh, I don't know, but Almirage is really powerful for going first with this deck. It always struggles. It's still not the greatest, but turning Alistair into a one-card column to help facilitate link plays that helps you establish just something going first rather than normal summon Alistair. It gets ashed and you lose. Um, at, at least you have at least you have that, and it's a guaranteed fire in the grave. Uh, Invoker of Madness is extremely good. It always has been. Um, thankfully, the discard is not a cost. So if it gets Ash or Valor or Widow Anchored, you don't have to discard that card. It still hurts, but at least you're not losing card economy. Now, if you're playing like a Shadal variant, just note that the effect isn't a cost, so it does trigger the Shadal monsters if you discard them for his effect. Uh, that's it for these guys. Um, like I said, I'm not entirely sure which one I want to stick with or if I just want to do both because they do definitely have their utilities. Um, then generic link monsters, we have Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Unicorn. They just help you go second, clear back row, clear problem cards, and then just go into, like, I'm going to kill you into the battle phase. And then Boral Sword, in case Purgatrio isn't enough. Um, scariest card in the extra deck by far. And that's all 15 monsters in the extra deck. And the last section of this video I want to talk about is the cards I would consider if I was building this deck differently or building a side deck. Because like you guys saw, I didn't build you a side deck because the format's really undefined. And I don't want to tell you what's good if I don't really know what's good right now. Uh, Lancia is always something to keep in mind when you're going into a new format. Orcus, Thunder Dragon, um, they're all relevant. So it should always be in your radar. I've been citing it for the most part uh, because people are still comfortable with those decks until new stuff comes out. I don't really see them branching off. Uh, Cyframe Gear Gamma, you know, it's a good card. Uh, Lambda is really neat with the Mech Knights. And, like, I want this card to be broken because resolving it and then getting two free Link materials, it, I mean, it's just pretty good. Uh, and then Dino Wrestler Panker Tops. I almost main this card. I would consider maining two if I'm blinding second, but I just didn't want to play more than 40. It's it's great. Cyber Dragon pops a card, 2600. It's huge for uh, people who have been playing Panker Tops for a reason, right? I don't need to go in any more detail on that. For the spells, uh, Call by the Grave, Super Poly, Twin Twisters. Call by the Grave, if I was playing going first, I would 100% play this card. Since I'm playing going second, yes, um, I'm still susceptible to hand traps, but I have that sixth card to help either bait the negations early because they could have discarded them off dangers. They could have put them back in their deck with Saryuja since they were going first. They want card, um, they want combo pieces instead. So I'm not as worried about hand traps going second and I have more cards to play with. So um, if I was going first, I would 100% play this because like I said, you lose to everything. Uh, Super Poly, surprisingly, this did not make it into the main because Anytime you would use Super Poly is after your Alistair got hit or you're making like like it's good, but you can't use this card before you combo unless you're playing generic Super Poly targets and then uh, then you're missing extra deck spots and it just becomes really awkward. Do you just play Mud Dragon? Um, if I did play Super Poly in the main deck, the only target would be Mud Dragon, and then maybe I'd side Violet Chimera, maybe I'd side Starving Venom, but uh, and Twin Twisters is just, if you're going against True Draco, if you're going against uh, Subterra Guru, this is probably the best card. Because you don't want to use evenly matched. You don't want to waste the battle phase because you're trying to kill them. Uh, and then the last sub-engine I would consider is the Destrudo Mermer. Yes, it takes up a lot of extra deck spots, but this is scary. Especially going second, you normal summon Alistair. They waste a negation, activate Destrudo, or you pitch Destrudo off of the Alistair Invoker dude. And like, Yazi, if they can't answer Yazi, you win the game. And that's why it's the scariest thing. Like, you're playing an OTK deck, 
this is pay half my life. I'm going in, I'm going all in. Like I want to win, but Mary Maris is glued to my hand and I freaking hate it. <laughs> uh, and the uh, only trap card I have in here is World Legacy Secrets. Like I said, I would side this for going first or if I was playing a control deck, maybe I'd play this going first, but I'm not entirely sure. And the only Link Monster that I would maybe consider playing is this Black Luster Soldier of Chaos. Um, some decks can't answer this card if you make it with a level 7 or higher, which you can do very easily. Uh, Salomon Great have a very difficult time dealing with this thing that can be targeted or destroyed by card effects. Uh, it's kind of scary if it sticks on board, banishes a card for free. Yes, you have Boral Sword, but sometimes you don't have the resources to go into Boral Sword. So this card I've been really testing in just about every deck that I'm building because it is so generic and it's so it's not over the top strong but it is no it's notably powerful but guys that's it if you have enjoyed my invoke deck profile please leave a like comment and subscribe I want to know what you guys think of the deck list I want to know what you guys are doing with invoked as a deck because it's new format people play stuff differently start a conversation but guys I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time